Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, good to see you. Okay, this is show number 118, No Free Will as a Revolutionary Religious Precept. Okay, and the idea behind this show is like within religion we have these basic ideas like there's a God and there's good and evil and all that stuff. And one of the basic ideas is that we have a free will. The problem with that is like we don't. So like one of the found and like you want to you got to understand this like part of like the whole religious thing is like when we die we're going to go to either like a heaven or a hell and stuff. Like I believe we all go to heaven. Whatever. It's a Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all believe in free will, correct? Yeah, and Buddhism. Well, Buddhism is an interesting. It really doesn't up until the very end. Because it believes in karma and cause and effect. I know, but what happens is like, and yeah, you get out of the circle after eighty-eight years, thousand years, or something. Right. You can meditate out of it at the end, anyway. But no, let's you, talk about the three major religions in the Western society. Is okay. all completely wrong. All right. So yeah. So like the idea is like to the extent we we believe in free will, the priests and these guys and rabbis and all that, then like you get a four-year-old, right? Four-year-old kid, five-year-old kid. And they teach him this notion of free will, and they teach the kid, like, you know, if you don't believe what we believe, what we tell you believe, what the church tells you believe, and all that, you may, like, when you die, go to a place where you suffer eternally. I mean, like, that's not a nice thing to tell kids. That's crazy. And, and a lot of adults, let me tell you something. I've, had no, I've known people that are afraid, they're afraid that when they die, they're going to go to hell. And, like, so that, you know, to me, to me, that's a very, very, like, not good belief. These people that are afraid they're going to go to hell obviously believe in free will. That's the thing. Because if there's no free will, there's no heaven or hell. There's no judgment day. How could God judge you for unfree will? Explain that to the audience. That's so important. Come on. Is our, is our audience... Uh, we've done three no, episodes. I feel I like know. being funny again. Is our... Uh, a three, I don't want to offend our audience. You're not offending. A three-year-old could understand You this. want to know something? If you don't have free will, you can't be judged either way. I know. You want to know something? That, you want me to explain that? Yes. And like, and Are that, you serious? No, no, because you want to know something? like. There's no judgment day without free will. Well, they get or that. you're predetermined to go to heaven or hell. They get that. All right. But, all but right. the idea is like people, all right, people believe in free will, right? And like. Some do. Some nutty people do, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> The idea is, all right, to the extent that we believe in free will, it's because, like, God made us believe in free will. God made us believe that the earth was flat. God made us believe a lot of things. He made us believe, like, the Adam, like, the, the first woman was ripped out of Adam's rib and stuff. Or he the made... sun rotated around the earth. Right. Galileo and Copernicus, right. you know, that so, whole thing. Yeah, so God makes us believe the stuff that isn't true. And then, like, after a few thousand years, he says, listen, guys, I was just, like, telling you a story. Here's the real truth. That's the whole thing with this free will thing. All right. As we do before we start every show, like, we got, ex you know, because we just, like, we had a, a, a mic malfunction. So we're like, this is like tape two. Ordinarily, we go straight through on these shows. But all right. So, like, we're going to explain to you. If we had first, a free will, there wouldn't have been any malfunctions. Sorry. No, there could have been. Even with free will, I would have freely chosen not to have it. Oh. You can't choose, like. I would freely choose to always be in a good mood. So, yeah, right. you're right. Well, that's true. All right, here's the thing. Yeah, they're right. You can't freely choose that, yeah. All right, so, like, when people say they have a free will, what do they mean? They mean they can make decisions that are independent, 100% independent of their genetics and conditioning. Yeah. Totally impossible. Right, and people... And pe they could have done otherwise. Right. The, the people, like, yeah, that they could have... If I made a decision, I didn't have to make that decision. I could have chosen otherwise, you know. And, and it was I, uncaused and not random. Right. My decision. Or another thing is, like, my decision is completely up to me, it's completely up to us, and nothing that I didn't have any control over it was either influencing it or making it for me. That's impossible. Let's, let's explain to them very briefly why it's impossible. Free will is impossible for many reasons. Which one do you want me to start with? Hedonic. Get into, yeah. Okay, the number one theory in the universe, which I hardly ever get to say, is I believe the number one refutation for free will is what we call the hedonic imperative, otherwise known as the pleasure principle by Sigmund Freud. It is the number one hard program in us, and it states that any time we're at, say, a fork in the road and we can't decide what to do, we're always going to go towards pleasure and away from pain. We have no choice in the matter. Now, you may say to me, well, why is that person self-destructive and suicidal? 
don't put your mind in their life. In other words, what they're doing is they're still going towards pleasure and away from pain, but maybe not the way you would be doing it. So you say to yourself, oh, they've breached the hedonic imperative. They haven't. They're just going towards pleasure and away from pain in their particular, unique, causal history way. Excellent. So it would be like getting a robot, like you said, or I said, that goes into a wall, and it's always programmed to go left if it hits the wall. I heard you say that somewhere. Absolutely. That's in my book, I think. <laughs> Uh, so we're being programmed by God with the hedonic imperative. We're always going to go towards pleasure and away from pain. It trumps the survival instinct, which Bill Carter might be watching and says, because people do commit suicide. So how could this, how could the survival instinct be greater than hedonic? Hedonic states it's greater than everything else because people would rather die than suffer. They're going towards pleasure or away from pain, in which case their lives are too painful, so they kill themselves. Absolutely. That's their version of hedonic imperative at that moment. So, so life what, is too painful. Absolutely. So, what's the outcome of that? If we you had have no choice but to believe what you're going to believe because it feels best to believe it yes. at that time. Yes. Explains everything. Causality is second. Now. Or now, first. Uh, well, yeah, they're tied for me. If we had a free will, everybody on the planet would be completely blissed out. Ah, yes. Completely euphoric, you know. Cloud nine every moment of every day. Why? Because who would freely choose to feel any negative feeling or experience any negative thought? We'd all be perfect angels all the time with free will. We'd also, yeah, what you're talking about the moral imperative. And that's another thing. Like, if we had a free will and St. Paul... That's a subset of the hedonic imperative. Well, kind of, yes, yeah. Because, like, basically we're hardwired to do what we consider is the right thing. In hindsight, we might realize, well, I thought it was the right thing at the time. But, like, but whenever, whenever we make a decision... You know, and this is like, let's, this is when we think... Well, we might do the quote-unquote wrong thing, like cheat the government or whatever, but we're getting more pleasure out of it. So the hedonic right. imperative still reigns supreme. Or even let's say we're cheating the government. We're saying to ourselves, like underneath, well, the government is cheating me, so I'm getting them back or whatever. You know, there's always a rationale. Okay. Okay. Why is this important, the show? This is important because, like, religiously, first of all, like, let me tell you something. Religion's on the wane in a lot of parts of the world. I mean, like, in Europe, and the very few people are religious anymore. And religiously, you know, like, we've got who we are completely wrong. I mean, like, basically, w the belief in free will is a subversion of God's supremacy. Like, God is the ultimate. God is everything. We're God, you're God. God is, is all-powerful, Okay. Everything is up to him. If you believe in free will, you're kind of like saying, well, no, God isn't all-powerful. God is like, you know. It's important because it's the truth, period, end of story. We're all in this earth together after th hundreds of millions of years and thousands of years of evolution. Of course, we're making faster uh, cars and better computers and faster internets and YouTube and iTunes and iPods and ITV is coming out. What does it all mean? What's the point? If we all believe in free will, that's not the point of human existence. It's to get the consciousness part right. I mean, I don't know. So you can make more money and get a better house and a better car and a better looking husband or wife and send your kid to better schools. If you're believing in free will, you've got the whole thing wrong. The reason why human beings came to Earth is to find out the truth to things. Would you prefer, I rather, would you prefer that I lie to you or tell you the truth about something? I'd like the truth. Absolutely. So in the long run, you'd rather hear the truth. So the truth is... There's no free will, the name of the show. No free will. That's the truth. It's not even an illusion. I don't know why he has this sign. He, he likes it because it looks like... An illusion is something a, mag a magician does that tries to trick you. Free will is not trying to trick me, unless you're dumb. I mean, it's so obvious that okay. there's no free will. It's not trying to trick me. No, I know. So it's not that tricky. You don't have free will. You never had it. We'll never have it. And that's the end of it. I mean, it's just uh, cause and effect, hedonic... Or for this show, it's God's will. Everything is God's will. God makes everything happen. I never get to say my trading places theory. Can I just say it? Absolutely. First time ever on TV, the trading places theory. You don't even know what it is. I think I get it. I think I... If I okay, name the most... Uh, sit at home. Okay, first of all, you want to do the causality of people like, why are you in that chair? Why are you wearing that? Everything has a reason, but okay. Name whoever's sitting at home. Think of three most evil people that you can think of and write it down. Let's wait a few seconds. So you got Saddam Hussein and Mussolini, who Hitler. <laughs> so if you were Hitler, atom for atom, quark for quark, evil soul for evil soul, evil mind for evil mind, neutrino for neutrino, boson for boson, you would be Hitler, 
and he could have been born, his parents, his genetic. So the moral responsibility thing, which also proves there isn't free will, is you could have easily been that guy, Osama bin Laden, uh, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein's son, the, the guy in North Korea that everybody says is evil. If you were he, Adam for Adam, you would be him and do exactly what they did. In the case of Hitler, you would have done exact because you would have been him, Adam for Adam. So, where's the freedom in that? And now, how trading does, places mean he could have been born and been you, and right. he would have acted like you. And how does soul for soul, mind for mind? I don't want to hear this crap. You know that I have a soul that's immaterial. If you had, if you had Hitler's soul, and Hitler's mind, and Hitler's, if you would be him, you would be him. You would be him. That's it. Now, how does so how could he be in hell when it could have been you? How does this relate to this? I'll I tell you how. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you, this is now I've done important. three shows in a row. I'm getting tired. Forgiveness. Me too. Forgiveness. <laughs> Forgiveness is a very important part of religion. You know, in other words, like, we forgive people because we know that, like, we're fallible. We make mistakes. Or we could not have done sin. otherwise. If you were right. Hitler, you would have been Hitler and now, acted every single way just like Hitler. Religion teaches us to love people. You want to love your neighbor. You want to love yourself. You want to love God, all right? Now, if you believe in free will, somebody does something wrong, these guys, you're going to hate them. And religion doesn't want you to do that, so religion came up with this thing called forgiveness. You say to yourself, well, people aren't perfect, you know, so you got to forgive them. What's the value of this free will thing to this whole forgiveness thing? Under the religious paradigm, you forgive people out of goodness. I'm going to forgive you out of the goodness my, of my what heart. What if someone is so evil? Let what me, about the capital? No, okay. no, I want to finish. All right. All right. So under the, free, under the religious you know, precept of forgiveness... You're forgiving people not because necessarily they deserve whatever, but you're making this choice out of goodness. When you understand that Hitler, Hussein, whoever it is, didn't, Stalin. didn't have a free will, there is no logical reason to hate them. Because in other words, like God was making, and this is like a bummer. I mean, like God made those people do that. They had no choice in the or matter. Or the tsunami or the earthquake. I mean, it's the same thing. I know. Nature. I know. So the idea is like to the understand you, to, to the extent you understand, free will is impossible. You can fear them. You just can't hate them. You don't even have to forgive people. You you you, you just like you can't indict them because it, it wasn't up to them. You can. But you can still lock them up, and even in some cases they're not rehabilitatable. If that's a word, rehabilitate. Yeah. yeah. You could, uh, if it's your hedonic imperative at, to feel okay about capital punishment, killing them, pragmatically so be it. But they're not going to eternally rotten hell they couldn't help themselves That's, they were raised differently than you right so parents told them different things right because like because we don't have free will it would be completely unjust unfair for god to make some people be genocidal monsters and then you know condemn them to like an eternal in, in hellfire for what they were made to do that would become so nobody has to worry about going to hell um so no free will is a revolutionary religious precept what do you make of it when people tell me God gave man, quote, free will? That's like, you know, people are, first it's not in the Bible. You know what's in the Bible, at least in the New Testament? Paul, St. Paul, writing in Romans 7.15, he's talking to the Romans, and he's saying, you know, like, I want to do good. You know, I really want to do what's best, but sometimes I find that I can't. Sometimes I do what I, what I hate. He was getting it. He could have done this show. He got it back then that he didn't have a free will. So there's no chapter or verse in the Old or New Testament that says God gave man free will. No, there's there's some verses in the Old Testament that says, like, you know, God says choose, you know, right? But he doesn't say freely choose. I see things that say, like, God is your predetermined, prede predestined in the Bible. I don't yes. know where it is, but I don't see anywhere it says God gave man. Anyway, talk about the new, why is this a new revolutionary religious Precept. All right. The idea is because, like, our our current paradigm, religious paradigm, is like there's a separation between us and God. There's God that's transcendent, and then there's we, and we can do things that are completely up to us. Okay. The truth is that everything is God. You're God. I'm God. Everyone's God. Everything is God. God An is anxiety all Anxiety and depression is God. Yes. Yes. Everything's so, God. So, like, we're just chemicals. Yeah, so now the idea, if, if, if everything is God, that's elevating God. That's God is the only thing. And so that, and the other thing is like there's no separation between God and us in that sense. I finally figured out what G and GE means. Oh, yeah. Okay, because... Um, <laughs> George and George and Anel, right? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so... Uh, 
So no free will is a revolutionary religious precept or concept, right? Yeah. So everything is God willed or universe willed. Yeah, and let's go just with. But God. we had a couple shows here because uh, we haven't. I know it's off topic, but the chaos theory, Heisenberg, uncertainty principle. I get that so much. We don't really address it that much, but we could do that with, a little later. Yeah, or, or yeah. Right, stick with the religion thing. <laughs> All right, religion. Religion is very important. People. Some people like we we're talking about before. Some people say that like, well, you know. Relig free will may be an illusion, but it's an illusion we need because if everybody understood that nothing's up to us, everybody would have that as an excuse to do wrong. And religion is about morality, and and it, it's a it's a valid concern. But explain to the audience why it's something that they don't have to worry about. That like understanding that you don't have a free will doesn't mean that we're going to throw morality out the window and all that. Well, actually, without free will. With free will, people would be doing whatever they wanted. There wouldn't be any causality to it. People would wake up, like I've said, like you might be working for the uh, Manhattan subway system for 35 years. If you had free will, you might wake up the next day and say you want to be a fisherman in uh, Equatorial Guinea or something and or teach high school in Guam. You know, something totally – it's only because of causality that people don't go be doing all kinds of crazy things. If you had free will, there wouldn't be any – causality connecting one day to the next you could wake up and just say like i've said this before i want to be a nuclear russian uh, submarine scientist when you know you're not qualified for that first of all you're not russian you know so if there were free will there would be total chaos it's just the opposite because there would be no preferences anymore everything would look 50 50 and i would wake up tomorrow saying see you later i'm gonna be an opera singer in argentina because i always want i mean all right this is important so Think it's just the this. opposite of what you're saying no free will is what causes everything to kind of make sense. Because with free will, it would be a madhouse. It would be a zoo of people just doing whatever. I mean, there would be no connection to anything. Exactly. Because there would be no causality. So think about that for a second or yes. more. <laughs> okay. Um, Does that make sense? Absolutely. So the idea is what Anel just said, in, 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 in other words, is like... And also, you're saying without free will, why people wouldn't do whatever they want. Actions will still have consequences with or without free will. The hedonic imperative, people will pragmatically still go to. What I'm concerned about is a fundamental heaven and hell, you know, eternity thing. But if you don't believe in free will and you go ahead and steal someone's car and say to them, well, I don't have a free will, don't sue me. They're going to say, listen, I pragmatically, you took my energy or I don't feel it's fair and or you're going to jail. So to deter other people. And you need to be rehabilitating condition not to do that. Right, that's a very important point. In religion, we want to be sure that people do the right thing. And people have to be encouraged either through reward or punishment to do the right thing. So we're not saying you, you, you just undo all that stuff. You know, you recognize that people don't have a free will. But when people, and so like, you know, recognizing that people don't have a free will helps you to understand that like with your kids with young people and stuff what we put into them is what they're going to like express so it, it better you know it better explains that like it's important to really get people to like ha learn moral precepts and stuff and the other part is that I, I lost my train of thought if i had a free will i was going to say something i was going to say something it just like flew out of my mind if i had a free will all right the other part is like <laughs> that free all right we're we're like morality isn't going to fall apart by understanding that free will is impossible oh i got it it's because like we depend on this reward and punishment thing in other words like under the free will paradigm people are evil you're going to hate them you're going to like you know whatever and that's not good that's not good for them that's not good for religion but like when you understand nobody has free will fine you might have to like punish people or threaten uh, punishment and stuff but you're doing this from the from a, a more compassionate place you care about them you don't want them to suffer you know it wasn't up to them you know they had no choice but to do what they did so like you know you might have to separate them but it'd be the least it wouldn't be like punishing them as much as you can through hatred and through vindictiveness and all that stuff it'd be like correcting them you know with as much compassion as you can and religion is about compassion it's about caring what about, about the people. argument if i don't have a free will why should i do anything at all yeah, some people say, well, you know, it's like this fatalist thing. If I don't have a free will, what's the point of everything? You know, what's the point of waking up? Well, the thing is, like, why do we do stuff? We do stuff because we're conditioned. In other words, we can't but seek, seek pleasure and avoid pain. You know, if we tried to change, if we tried to not do anything, it wouldn't work. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, religion. Religion, it's losing a lot of people, you know, throughout the world. And a lot of it is because, like, you know, people don't want to believe that, like, an all-loving God is going to condemn. That's why I left tra traditional religion. You know, I just couldn't, you know... Conscience. Ab abide. Yeah, mm -hmm. conscience, this, like, understanding that people really bought into and held the belief that, like, people were so evil that God, who was supposed to be so good, would condemn them to eternal punishment. That, that to me, that, that belief is so hateful. It's so wrong. It's also hateful. I mean, I can't think of a more hateful belief. So, like, to the extent that we understand that no, there's no free will, that belief no longer makes sense. Right. Okay. Um... I mean, if God, uh, the other thing about religion is they talk out of both sides of their mouth. They'll say you have free will, but God knows everything. Yeah. Well, well which is it? That's a good point. It doesn't even have to be God. If one other person knows everything that you're going to do, you just still, in other words, if I know everything, if I'm not God, but I just happen to know that you're going to do something, that, and I know for absolute certain what your future is, you don't have free will. That's true. Think about that. Think about that. If, if anybody, I know everything, well, a human couldn't, but I'm just saying. Right. If, if you could, if you or God knew, you know, 100 years ago, 10 years ago, what we're doing today, and God is apparently supposed to know that because God is omniscient, right? If God knows that or if somebody knew that, then we couldn't have a free will because it's already known. So we're just like, you know, playing it out. What about this nonsense of God knows your free will decisions in advance? See, that doesn't make sense because, like, you know, if God... Yeah, this is frustrating. This is nonsense. This yeah, is so ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And, you know, it's like... It's totally ridiculous. I'm getting upset. I'm getting upset. <laughs> I mean, and we would... I we mean, come on. People actually tell me God knows your free will decisions. Do I even have to explain how stupid that is? And, all right. And maybe I do. But whose stupidity is? It's not the people's stupidity because, like, if people, like... Were, if we had a free will, we'd all be geniuses. We'd all be Einsteins. Nobody chooses How to not understand this. How can anybody say, what was Rabbi New saying? Rabbi New, uh, a Chabad the, um, religious that, rabbi. Uh, the past was God's will, but the future is your will? That's crazy. Yeah, and I think what he meant is like... No, he didn't. He, he just crazy. He meant that he understands that like, because everything has a cause and what happened in the past makes... What but your future present. will be your past. It's all God's will. Right, no, but Rabbi News' point is like, all right, fine, fine, everything is predetermined, but we can't use You're supposed use to that learn from your mistakes? Well, no, we can't, we can't use that as an excuse. You know, just because the future is already set in stone, that shouldn't give us license to do whatever we want. That, I think that's his point. He, he didn't make it all that clear, but that, I think that's what he was saying. But, all right, so like... I don't remember what he said. It was so crazy. God. God is everything. God, you're God. And, and when I say you're God... But why can't these ministers and rabbis and whatever the Muslim clerk, why can't they just bite the bullet and say, look, we were wrong, there's no free will? Because what they're doing they're now weeks. is they're saying, God knows everything and you have free will. Right. I mean, it doesn't take more than a four-year-old to figure out how ridiculous that they're is. They're moral, intellectual cowards. And it's not their fault because what happens is like... No, you're, you're taking it both ways. I know, but that's because like, they don't want to upset their congregation. They're upset that if Just like... Just go up to them and say, which, which is it? Free will they, or not? If they tell their congregation they don't have free will, they might like get some people saying, what are you telling us? They're cowards. You know, now you can't no, blame them. what do you them. mean? It's one or the other. Pick a side. Stop double-talking and flip-flopping. You either have free will... Or you don't. Don't tell me that God knows everything, but yet you have free will. All right, now here's a question. I mean, come on. Free will is impossible. Why would God make us believe this? That's that's insane. I mean, like, you're 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 you control Why everything. Why do therapists believe in free will? They study psychology and they still believe in free oh, will. Oh, I know. It's philosophers. Philosophers. Philosophers believe that everything has a cause, but they have a free will. At least mo most of them do. Not Sam Harris. No, I know. Well, he's he's more of a neuroscientist and all, but right. He's a PhD but, philosopher. And the thing with philosophers, like, philosophers are paid to be logical. That's what logic is their trade. Logic is what they're supposed to be good at. And I think for, they're paid to be nutty. For half of philosophers to not get the – half half of philosophers believe we have free will. That's insane. That's absolutely – They're paid you to make arguments that nobody can understand going so, with rigmarole of crap but, and gibberish. Like, but the question is, like, why would God – What about Deepak Chopra with his uh, quantum consciousness <laughs> and Atwami Goswami, whatever that guy's name is? What right. Was his name? Uh, I, what? I don't remember. They Goswami, don't make any right. sense. They don't make sense. And if they had a free will, they would make sense. They don't understand the quantum mechanics. The uncertainty principle doesn't prove anything. Exactly. Oh, shit. Sorry. Go ahead. 
<laughs> what, what is what? Tell tell the audience in the last two minutes. Message received. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> tell tell the audience why the uncertainty principle, because everyone loves to talk about, it, doesn't right, prove anything. We'll get into science. All right. Uncertainty principle, quantum mechanics. They say at, at the subatomic level, if you're trying to simultaneously measure the position and momentum of possible of a particle, you find you can't do that. Okay? Because like, well, the reason is because like you're shooting a photon at another particle, it's going to change its momentum. I mean, that's the real reason. So like some people say, because of that, that means we may have a free will. That's absurd. There's nothing about quantum mechanics that allows for free will. Quantum mechanics is causal. Okay. And probabilities are causal. Right, probabilities. They're saying there's uncertainty. S some they people can't measure the momentum and the position at the same time. As you get one more precise with one, you lose. All right, with things that small, with all those variables, of course, I, I agree with that. It's unpredictable. No, no. I never said life was predictable. And here's the thing: people like when when people say that you know that something is uncertain, what they mean to say is like that our knowledge of it is uncertain. They they some people think that the particles are behaving uncertainly. You know, but you and I don't believe in free will. We don't no. think life is predictable or certain. No. We don't know all the variables. That's all. I know. I don't know what these guys, because it's uncertain, means it somehow proves free will. But the question is, why would God, like, make people get stuff the wrong? The hedonic imperative. It makes them feel better to believe in free will. That's why. But why would God get people to believe in free will? Make them, make Because them, you got to understand, God is in control of everything. God made feet people. Because he hardwired the hedonic imperative, and it makes people emotional. Religion is an emotional thing. It's not reasonable. So believing in free will and life, uh, heaven and hell, it's an emotional thing. It's not based on reason. People are not reasonable when it comes to religion. But you got to understand, God is the one who's making them unreasonable. Why would you create a creation? No, no, because his number one rule is a donic imperative. That's consistent. So it makes people feel better, or did, to believe in heaven and hell. It gives them something to shoot for. That's because God is making them feel more pleasure. So why did God goodness. give them a donic imperative? To, oh, why didn't they feel more pleasure in knowing the truth? There you go. Hmm. Because people like to feel like their lives are up to them, or used to. But why did God make people feel like, you know, lives are up to them? Why? Why? That's what I'm saying. God could have like had. It them just wasn't it. time for the truth. It just like you said, everything has its time, with the with the sun around the moon. I mean, the earth around the sun, and the sun around whatever, and the, the flatness of the earth being wrong. Go ahead, eight seconds. I don't, this show is over. Okay, the world isn't over. Everybody's gonna get this, but for now, this show is over. <laughs>